how to knock pre foreclosures effectively. There's multiple lists that you guys can use, like PropStream, Public Records, Auction.com. I want you guys to just choose one lead source and finding out what you feel what you want to stick with long term. Or you can use a combination. One of the things I recognize if you like use Zillow, some of the information is not so up to date or accurate. There are probably were some lists that was should have been a foreclosure that didn't show up and houses that were a foreclosure uh, that showed up but it was listed like a day ago. So I want you guys to find a lead source either that's showing up to the county clerk, getting that list or going to the county website that actually shows that and it has the most up-to-date information and refreshes in a daily basis. That would be a recommended data point and source that I'll recommend. If you're someone who doesn't have a lot of money uh, starting off and just have a good pump of gas and some time to utilize, I would strongly recommend starting off with door knocking just because it doesn't require a lot of capital and it is actually one of the most beneficial skill that you should have when you are talking to someone because it goes to face to face with a stranger which relies a lot of body language, tonality, and just your posture on who you are. It's one of the most effective communication skills that you should use uh, regardless of any social setting. Everyone you start off to know was eventually a stranger and became friends. I had a bunch of fear when first starting of I'm stepping in someone's property. I'm asking about basically their situation financially. Their guard is going to be ultimately up and we can actually talk about that in some other video on how your approach should be and mindset and there's a ton of videos that are out there on YouTube that I highly recommend. The most important thing when you first start off is about efficiency. One of the websites that I recommend is MapQuest. For those who are not familiar with MapQuest, it basically just shows you a route on multiple addresses that you can go in order chronologically that will be the most time efficient way for you. I have my home address on the very top, right? And in between is the other addresses that you're pinpointing to, the pre-foreclosures, right? If you go to the bottom right, when you put all the addresses finally, route optimization is going to show you on what order you should go chronologically in order to save your time the most efficiently. Let's just put your home address on the top and you fill out the rest. You're going to do route optimization. Then you're going to add another address, which is basically your route back to home, unless you're going to school or work and so on and so forth. Right? So once you put your home address, which I'm repeating myself a little bit, and you put the properties that you're visiting, then your home address is gonna optimize basically the route that you're gonna do. Now, I highly recommend for those who are starting off to do anywhere from 10 to 15 doors, just cause if you knock about 100 doors, you're definitely gonna get a deal. The most important thing is to just get a consistent flow of deals to your pipeline and building that. My first uh, week, I got a deal, and three days later, I got a deal. It's actually possible out there if you're knocking that amount of doors and leaving sticky notes uh, where they can actually call you back, reference back. It's going to give you a high probability of success, especially considering they have a strong motivation and have a stress, distress, what we like to call in the real estate community. When I do the sticky notes, right, it's really casual, right, because it doesn't have like a lot of business layout that's going on so it has a very familiar neutral place of being when you put just your phone number that's what i typically like to do just leave my personal cell or i'll say hello neighbor if you need help reach out to me i wouldn't even leave my name on it right so it stays in a neutral position of you not being an investor or a wholesaler because the last thing they want to talk to is actually talk to someone about selling a property or having a sales conversation. It's because they're just afraid to talk to strangers at the end of the day, considering they're getting bombarded with phone calls and door knocks as well. Don't want to talk about much about selling a home. That would be the most efficient way to not just only have a conversation, but also optimize on making the prospect or seller open up to you. Pretty much don't want to talk about much about how you're gonna sell the house. Also, when you look at the addresses, is it a gated community or not? 
because if it's a gated community then the chances are you have to pretty much wait or you're just going to be looking suspicious in the neighborhood where they have a pole that goes up and down it can also damage your car so if you want to assess obviously what you guys are going to feel is going to be the best thing for you where there's a airtight security guard i'll pretty much avoid it and you pretty much drove 10 to 30 minutes just for one property just to drive away from it so it's important for you to know that by putting the address going on the street view on google maps and finding out what kind of gated community it is so you can assess if you still want to visit it or not you also want to look at zillow right uh, just to see if the property is actually under contract aka pending basically if they're listed with a realtor so you can actually call the realtor like how much their arrears are what is the situation with the seller and why that's they said at a certain price without facing the homeowner you can find much as information by just contacting the realtor plus if they're currently pending or under contract then there's no really much for reason for you to go all the way out there if it was listed a couple days ago or a month ago two months ago and it's currently under contract so you want to think of ways obviously besides just putting an address to find out much information about the property as well so you can assess if you want to actually talk to the prospect or it's better suited for you to replace that prospect with a person that's heading to auction usually i like to go with people that are about three to two weeks before the auction you can obviously do people that are less than that but so you want to find out how long it usually takes for a title company to close on your following state and assess properly on how you want to approach that. It doesn't help in the state of Florida, it's also lease pendant, which basically means people can keep on delaying the auction as much as they want. So as long as like the banks don't have much of them being delinquent consistently and with the foreclosure attorneys, they have a good track history on themselves, which basically means they have a clear history of not going under foreclosure. If you look at some of the data points where, okay, this person seems like a very clean record, uh, I'll still approach it because you never know that you might end up finding those people that are just realistic saying, I probably should sell my property at that point. So also you want to be the one first person to go to the property versus being the 30th, 100th guy approaching it. There's no really right or wrong answer i like to say it's more probably the approach and the relationship that you will build with the person because once they sit down with you they are meaning that they have a problem or chatting with you on detail what's going on with the property and why they're in that position it's more about having the ability to listen and empathize just providing options what you feel like will be the best thing for them and laying them out for them and obviously them telling you why reinstating the loan, doing a loan mod or bankruptcy probably won't make the most sense to them. And actually probably selling the property will be the most realistic once uh, you have that quality conversation. Because the thing is, there's so many people that are just approaching them that they have a hard time assessing on who is legitimate that will help them out in a good place. Because a lot of people are just want to extract more money or take away the property for them. So the last thing you want to do is put yourself in the bubble. And I recommend on how to stand out more than anything is just probably telling your personal story on why you decided to do this, just so they have a more humanized view on who you are. I think that would be the most efficient way to not just only start off as you leaning on the conversation, but also optimize your time uh, just so you can put yourself in a position of winning.